Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Matthew Barrasso of Redeemer Evangelical Lutheran Church in Parkton, Maryland. What follows is our midweek prayer service for Easter Vigil 4. If you're unfamiliar with the Easter Vigil season or have questions about our congregation, feel free to visit our website, www.redeemerparkton.org. For this midweek prayer service, we will be using the order of Compline. So if you have a hymnal, please get it out and participate as you are able. If not, that's okay. I'll be speaking all of the parts. That being said, we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty, grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault, Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of your sins. Amen. I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all of your sins. Amen. A reading of Psalm 80. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. It set out its branches to the sea, and it shoots to the river. Why, then, have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? The boar from the forest ravages it, and all that move in the field feed on it. Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted, and for the son whom you made strong for yourself. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down, may they perish at the rebuke of your face. But let your right hand be on the man of your right hand, the son of man whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we shall not turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. The grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. You may have noticed there's a little less hair on the top of my head than when I usually get a haircut. 
there is at least one story there. Some of you may remember that a few years ago I was cutting my son's hair and accidentally knocked the guard off the clippers. And it took all summer and then some for it to grow back. Now, like other people during this time of shutdown, our hair has continued to grow, and my oldest was in need of a haircut, and so was I. So I thought to myself, all right, I'll cut my hair and show him he has nothing to be afraid of this time. There was one problem. The only kind of trimmers I had at the time were beard trimmers. No big deal, I thought. It'll cut hair. And it did. Kind of. The process was less than ideal. I had to hold my hair taut so I could run the trimmers through. It only cut parts. My wife has pictures of how well this went, but I will not allow her to share those. About halfway through cutting my hair, half of it gone, patches at different lengths, I knew I needed the right tool. This meant I had to go out and get a set of trimmers. Thank God for hats. Well, I was able to get the trimmers and finish the job. My son, however, still is not too keen on me cutting his hair. When I was in the middle of this endeavor, he looked at my wife and I and said, I don't want you to cut my hair. And he hasn't changed his tune yet, despite my final result. Now really, I only have one person to blame for his distrust, and that's myself. He's seen me mess up his hair and mine. The problem is one I've created. Sometimes our problems are because of something we've done. Other times, we suffer because of someone else's action. And when we do, typically this changes our relationship with them. Maybe we aren't too quick to trust them in the same situation. Like my son, who looks at me and says, I don't want you to cut my hair. The psalm we are meditating on today sees a community responding to the one who caused them pain. Sure, it starts out okay, as the community address God as a shepherd who is enthroned, who has the ability to come and restore them. Stir up your might and come save us, they cry. But as the psalm goes on, we see that the one they are crying out to is the very one who handed them over. How long will you be angry, they ask. You make us an object of contemption for our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. It is clear to Israel who the cause of their suffering is. God. It is language like this that makes people think the psalm is expressing grief over the exile. And it should be noted, as uncomfortable as it sounds, that God was the one who carried off his people into exile. Just like God is the one who told Satan to consider his servant Job. Sometimes in the scriptures we see God as the one setting people up to suffer. Don't forget, it is the Spirit that leads Jesus out into the wilderness to fast and be tempted. It is God that Jesus cries out to on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What is being expressed by the psalmist here is uncomfortable, but it isn't wrong. Now, I'm not trying to say to you that God is the one causing your suffering. As I've said before, we can't say that if we don't have a text. But here we have a text. And it's clear that in this instance, God is acting this way. This truth, that God is the one who caused it, makes the rest of the psalm incredibly powerful as a witness to faith. Because they don't just admit that God has caused this situation for them. They also speak about the other things God has done. How he brought a vine out of Egypt, drove out the nations, and planted it. Moreover, that vine prospered until God broke down its walls. This psalm may be poetic, but it's also historical. You might say that this is a poetic historical account. Israel wasn't a literal vine, but God did bring them out of Egypt. He did plant them as his people in the promised land, and they did grow to be great until the time they were broken down by invading armies and carried off into exile. Israel knows this. Whatever they have, they have from the hand of God. 
and that can be a very sobering thought. But in the end, that thought leads Israel not to despair, not to cry out and curse God, but to turn back to him and seek the restoration only he could provide. One of Martin Luther's favorite texts was the story of the Canaanite woman who approaches Jesus and cries out, Son of David, have mercy on me. She wants her child to be healed, but Jesus ignores her, at least until the disciples get involved and ask him to send her away. She won't just go away, though. She persists. And this story crescendos in a legendary exchange where Jesus says, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. And the woman replies, yes, but even the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. He loved that story because it taught so clearly that sometimes you need to trust in God against God. She had been told no by God himself, and yet she trusted in God's mercy despite his no. Luther said of that text in a sermon, that faith takes Christ captive to his word. And what he means is precisely that the woman held Jesus to his own standard of mercy, of caring for the world, of restoring the brokenness of creation. Israel is doing the same thing in this psalm today. They are holding God to his word. He may have been the one to tear down their wall of protection, but he was the one who built it in the first place. He was the one who went to his people when they were enslaved in Egypt, who heard their cry and led them out by his mighty hand and outstretched arm. They know that only his mighty hand and outstretched arm can restore them. And actually, God does just that, not simply in bringing them out of exile, but in sending his son the one who gave crumbs to a Canaanite woman, the one who gave his life for the world. This is how God responds to a hurting, hurting and broken and suffering world by entering into it and taking the suffering upon himself and using it as a means to restore the world. His resurrection has begun that process, one that will be fully realized on the last day, until that day, when we suffer, no matter the place from which that suffering comes, we take Christ captive to his word. We hold fast to our baptisms where God says, you are mine. I have brought you out of the power of sin, death, and hell with mighty hands and outstretched arms. I have made you my child forever. We lean into that word cling to it, and remind God of his promise to us, the promise that suffering doesn't define us or our relationship with him or our future, that he might restore us, that he might let his face shine on us, that we may be saved. We take Christ captive to his word, just as God's people have done for generations. We cry out with the psalmist, with the community, with the people of God who came before us and those who will come after us. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Amen. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When I awake, your presence will give me joy. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we, who are wearied by the changes and chances of life, may find our rest in you. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Amen. Yeah.